Welcome to the ChatGPT Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Each episode, we dive into the latest developments in the exciting field of artificial intelligence, exploring its applications and potential impacts on our daily lives. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Today's episode is brought to you by Self Pause, which is an AI life coach that I absolutely love. Self Pause allows you to go and have a conversation around anything that you're trying to achieve. It helps you set goals, it helps you build positive habits, eliminate limiting beliefs. It's essentially just your personal coach for anything that you're trying to focus on in life. The best AI life coach you need to check them out Go download the app. This is something that seriously can change your mindset. And I am a massive believer in mindset. I know that if you change your mindset, you can accomplish anything you want to. So go download the Self Pause app today, iOS and Android. This is something you absolutely need to get. As more time passes since ChatGPT was launched, we're seeing more and more veterans in the tech and AI industry finally start to compete with different AI tools. And one of those veterans that has finally thrown its hat into the ring in a really big way is IBM, which recently has launched what they're calling Watson X Studio, which essentially is developed to help create um, and make generative AI easier for enterprises. So today on the podcast, we're going to dive into what exactly Watson X is. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of IBM and Watson, because actually I think this is kind of interest, interesting. Um, back in 2011, IBM unveiled another tool called Watson, which essentially was a question answering computer system, like really similar to ChatGPT, but it wasn't trained on the traditional transformer model. Um, it was a little bit more archaic in, in the design. In any case, it was developed by IBM's deep QA project, a research team led by um, David Ferocci. Um, so Watson was named after IBM's founder and first CEO, which is Thomas J. Watson. So that's what this original version was, and I'm assuming that's what this new Watson X is. Also, I'm assuming this new Watson X, the name is just, you know, paying homage to this earlier version. But in any case, the reason this original Watson system was famous is because it competed on the TV show Jeopardy in 2011 and it won. You know, this does kind of look like a publicity stunt for um, IBM and Watson, but apparently there was another um, piece of software that IBM made a long time ago that won some chess tournament. And so now they were kind of looking for the new thing and this is what they did. So... Um, yeah, back in 2011, it competed, it beat Brad Rutger and Ken Jennings, winning the first place prize of a million dollars. I'm sure the other two competitors were a little salty, to say the least, that, you know, they, they got that far and then someone put a computer system in there that beat them. Um, and then, interestingly enough, after that, right, because it would appear as though this was kind of like a chat GPT version way back in 2011. This is one of the earlier versions. But it wasn't really used uh, for any commercial purposes until 2013 when IBM announced that they were going to use it um, to help with decisions in lung cancer treatment. So, they, you know, they're using it for some interesting things. And then I'm not sure exactly what happened to it beyond that. It, it didn't seem to have, you know, made such a big splash that we now have ChatGPT. But in any case, that brings us to today when they have a new announcement uh, with their new technology. So their new IBM X is... IBM jumping back into this, you know, obviously they were a pioneer in this space. And so they're going to be announcing essentially three different product sets in their um, generative AI toolkit for enterprises. The first one is called Watson.ai. It's going to be the studio itself and also a foundational model library. They also have Watson.data, which is a data store, and then Watson.governance, a governance toolkit. So we'll jump into what each of these do and why they are important. So Right off the bat, I would say, so IBM's Watson X is a platform where enterprises can train, tune, and then they can go and deploy their own AI models based off of their own corporate data. So it can train foundational models and machine learning models um, for cloud environments. And IBM curated and trained models are also gonna be um, forming the backbone of the service. So there's also gonna be like, IBM has their own trained models in here. 
And this isn't the first company to announce this. There are other competitors. We're seeing um, other people like uh, Microsoft Azure, Amazon's SageMaker Studio, and also Google's Vertex AI are all doing similar things to this. And so this is micro this is IBM getting into the ecosystem um, and really trying to deploy it in a way that keeps enterprises on their software, on their like AI studio from start to finish. So I'll go over the other things that they're doing, but it's just something that I found is interesting is essentially these foundational models um, and open source AI AI models are going to handle the gathering and sorting um, of training data, and then they're going to pass that data to the businesses that need it. So there's also a toolkit for ongoing AI governance, like we talked about. Um, and essentially, IBM wants to provide an end to end AI workflow that's going to let businesses go from not having any AI in their company to um, customizing and running all of it for them. And most importantly for IBM, keeping this all on their own platform um, so that you don't have to go to Microsoft, Amazon, or Google in order to do this. And then they can keep all of that, you know, cloud computing and all of that um, processing right on their own systems. They said, we built IBM Watson X for the needs of enterprises so that clients can be more than just users. They can become AI advanced, uh, advantaged. So that was the chairman of um, IBM, or their uh, chief executive officer in their press release or whatever. But essentially following this like end-to-end -end workflow model, their clients of IBM essentially are going to be able to build their own models from the ground up or adapt existing AI models that um, that IBM has on their platform. So the, the Watson X Studio also includes tools for helping write code, um, similar to what we're seeing out of, you know, GitHub and uh, Microsoft. So it has a whole bunch of these like custom built AI models for doing custom things. They have one uh, for writing code. They have one uh, called FM.NLP. That's essentially a collection of large language models tailored to specific industry domains, right? So like they have, you know, really specific industry ones. And then they have one called FM.GeoSpaddle, which essentially is just a model that uses NASA's satellite data to analyze weather, weather patterns and climate change. Um, and so they have a couple, right, like these custom things. I'm assuming they have some sort of custom uh, exclusive deal with NASA on their satellite data um, that they use to process. So they're trying to find ways to use their own in-house custom data and create these little language models that would be useful to incorporate into different companies' um, own language models. So companies will be able to upload all of their own data right on the data store um, and then they're going to be able to train their own models off of this which i think is really powerful and ibm is trying to make this something exclusive where you'd rather use them than others by coming up with their own um, ai models in here and i think this is it's something really interesting because google recently released a memo that said we don't have a moat and neither does open ai and it's kind of like the fact it's kind of like this interesting conundrum that everyone in AI is having right now, there's a whole bunch of these big tech players trying to develop these AI tools, but no, there's not really a moat on access to a lot of this data. Like, uh, you know, Reddit decided they're going to start charging. So maybe that's like some sort of moat is the price. But in reality, people are going to get all of this data, whether they pay for it or not. And um, there isn't really a moat on the data. It's publicly available. And so it's going to be interesting to see what I believe is going to happen is all of these um, all of these companies are going to try to put moats by whatever data sets they have, making them exclusive to their own products. So if you want, you know, NASA's um, geo data, you're going to have to go to IBM and use their platforms, um, which makes sense. It's, it's pretty smart because like overall, you want to use all of their products, but it, it's going to get AI is going to get pretty commoditized where it's not going to be super different between different services and platforms for certain things. And the only way that they're going to be able to draw on customers is with exclusive data. Sort of similar, not far off from what you're seeing with Disney or Netflix, right? Like Netflix launched and it had all movies from everything on it. Um, and then as Disney wanted to get into the streaming wars, they cut off allowing all of their movies to be on Netflix and it's exclusively on Disney. And, you know, we're seeing like Disney and Hulu and all these different platforms trying to make exclusive content for their platforms that you're going to go there, even though, I mean, by and large, it's all just movies, right? So in any case, this is what I'm going to see. This is what we're seeing with AI. This is how people are going to create moats in the future. Google, it's interesting because Google said we don't have a moat. But like in reality, if data was the moat, Google does have a lot of different data sets that other people don't. 
Um, recently, I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about the fact that Google's Google Bard's um, capabilities now is able to read, it has access to all the transcripts of all YouTube videos. And so it's able to uh, read the transcripts from YouTube videos and search those. So you can say, hey, Google Bard, um, pull up the YouTube transcripts from this channel and and tell me what XYZ person's opinion is on this thing. And it can go look at all their YouTube videos and tell you what their opinion is on something. Now, it's not incredibly accurate at the moment, but it will come up with responses. Uh, one bug I found when it was doing that is that it was mixing like two people in one conversation. It was uh, mixing their opinions up because they're both in the same video. So not perfectly accurate, but um, you get the picture. Google has access to that library. They could potentially in the future make it so, um, you know, maybe they block everyone else from accessing the API to those transcripts. So um, it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens there. But in any case, back to Watson and what they're doing. Um, a couple of their other major software products that they're including in this is Watson Code Assistant, AIO Ops, Insights for Greater Visibility into IT Operations, Watson Assistant, and Watson Orchestrate for Labor and Customer Service Solutions, Environmental Intelligence Solutions for EIS Builders, which helps measure and respond to environmental risks. So at the recent 2023 conference, um, IBM announced the opening also of IBM Consulting Center for Excellence for Generative AI. Man, that is a bit of a mouthful. I feel like they probably could have come up with a better, shorter name for that. But in any case, um, essentially what they're doing is they're bringing together about a thousand gener generative AI experts um, who are going to work in consulting for different businesses who want to help bring um, or essentially build and deploy Watson X and AI into their company. So this makes a lot of sense, right? This this new software solution is uh, targeted for enterprises. It's going to be really powerful, but um, it's obviously got a lot of jargon and it's going to need a lot of help from, I believe, these experts and these uh, consultants to really help companies know and org organizations know how they can incorporate AI into their company and how to do that in the best way, what best industry practices are. And so this is kind of another uh, smart moat or competitive advantage, you could say, that IBM is offering. Um, by having, you know, a thousand, you know, really smart consultants that would cost a lot of money otherwise slash they're hard to get their get a hold of um, because Microsoft, Google and IBM are all snapping them up and paying really competitive salaries for them. Um, this is going to be a big competitive advantage for people to want to get onto the IBM system because they have someone there that can hold their hand and help them work through the whole process that is an expert on this. So I think it's going to be left to we're, it's getting, it's an arms race right now. It's going to be really interesting to see who pulls ahead on this, whether that's IBM, Microsoft, Amazon, or Google um, in this specific space, because we also have a couple other like newcomers like Cohere and Anthropic that are trying to get into this area as well, getting people to build um, their own AI models on top of their platform. So this is going to be a space that is going to be heavily competed against, and we're going to follow it closely to see who the winner is over the next months and years. The innovation in AI right now is absolutely exploding. If you want to stay on top of all the insane disruptions and innovation that's happening right now, you need to subscribe to our newsletter on AIbox.ai. We send you daily everything that is happening, the news and the crazy advancements in AI technology straight to your inbox for free every single day. So go to AIbox.ai, subscribe and stay ahead of the curve on the world of AI. If you are looking for an innovative and creative community of people using ChatGPT, you need to join our channel. ChatGPT creators community. I'll drop a link in the description to this podcast. We'd love to see you there where we share tips and tricks of what is working in ChatGPT. It's a lot easier than a podcast as you can see screenshots, you can share and comment on things that are currently working. So if this sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the comment. We'd love to have you in the community. You've been listening to the ChatGPT podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you listen to your podcasts and have a fantastic week.